there are so many uh, Africans living in the diaspora who are looking forward to visit, move to the continent. Mm -hmm. You've been here, you've experienced Africa. If you have a message for them, what would that message be? I would say do it. Just do it. Plan, but just come on out and do it. Any regrets so far? None. for inviting me into your shop yeah. you. and um, is moving to Africa now a movement? Wow, that's a question. You know, I think it's, it's just time. It's just the time because everything is just coming together. Wow. It's like a dream. It, you know, it, it's, just, it's just something that you just wonder to yourself, how did this happen? But there's more to this than we can actually see. There's something else going on. Yes. There's a vibration going on. There's something much more powerful than any of us. You know, this is not a coincidence. This is not a casual move. This is something else that is going on. Events that are occurring, people waking up, realizing that, um, you know, Africa has so many opportunities and place to be. Um, persons who are like yourself, who are going around, uh, making us more aware of what Africa has to offer. If you ever watch my first episode on Namibia, I stated vividly that Namibia is Africa's most underrated country. You know why I said that? Because Namibia is not what I expected. So I think it's all coming together. What really inspired you to move to Africa then? That's a great question. Um, it just kind of happened. Um, I was during the quarantine, somehow watching lots and lots of YouTube videos on Africa. I don't know why, it just happened that way. You know, you know when things just come in your thread, mm -hmm. and you just start. So I consumed a lot. And then I got the idea from one of the, I guess, influencers. Um, they said, you know, before you move here, you need to visit first, you know. So I said, why don't I just go ahead and visit? Just go ahead and do it. And so I just scraped everything up together, went ahead and did it. I came here and to Gambia, to the Gambia. And it was a very good experience. And then eventually, once I went back to the States, I said, you know what? I can go and move to Africa and try it. I mean, I'd rather go ahead and do it mm. than 20, 30 years down the line, I wish I had, you know, so. Mm. So how long have you been here now? I arrived here at the end of October of 2021, so not that long, mm. four months. Mm -hmm. And within a short period of time, what have you been able to establish in the Gambia? Oh, wow, I have opened this business that we're sitting in, and it's called Oasis Grocers and Emporium. And um, I've been here since January. I've opened for a month. So it's, I'm getting accustomed to the flow of how things occur here in the Gambia mm -hmm. and learning about, you know, getting my inventory and those things that you, you know, basic for putting a business together. Is it like a wholesale purchase or you can buy one and just walk in and buy one and go? Or it's a wholesale? You no, know, just walk in and buy one and go. Just like, like a mini market and emporium, if you, you know, once you, uh, I can take you around. It's not just, food or your household goods. I also want to have crafts in here. Um, maybe some items that are gently used and bring them in here as well. So that's the emporium um, portion of it. You know, you don't know what you're going to find. Yeah, well, what really inspired you to start something like this in here? Um, I've always had this desire to open a grocery store. And for a while, I was like, what did it come from? I was like, where did that come from? And then I remembered that from my family on my mother's side, they had um, a store in an island called St. Kitts. And it was like the main grocery store, really back, back, way back in the day, I guess you could say the 50s or so, something like that. So I'm thinking maybe it's just in my blood to be a merchant and to want to do that, yeah. Is it safe to live in the Gambia? Yeah, I go everywhere. <laughs> I walk everywhere. Catch the taxi, sometimes it's night.
so I don't feel like something's gonna happen to me. You still have to be aware. I mean, that's just normal, but um, it's pretty safe. Cost of living, is it expensive to live in here? I think it depends on the person. I think if you wanna look at cost of living, if you're looking at housing, that's really a major reduction because you know everything, you pay for everything up front. And so that takes the stress off of, you know, am I going to meet my mortgage? Am I going to meet my rent for those of us who may be in a situation like that? It's done, it's clear. And when you look at, even though it's big up front to pay, monthly it's not that much. Um, now other things, um, electricity, that depends on the person. I don't spend that much on electricity and you know you pay beforehand so you kind of think about it. Um, I don't I haven't had a water bill yet so I can't tell you about that. <laughs> Internet, you know, that's internet is internet. You know, you're gonna pay, pay a penny for that. But I think all in all, um, just the way things are operated, it makes you take pause and think, well, do I really need this? So you can start seeing the benefits of it. So, in a word, yes, it's uh, more economical, but it all depends on you. What has been your biggest challenge since you moved to the Gambia? Getting around, not that it's difficult, but when I first came I was kind of spoiled because I had a taxi driver that um, I connected with, um, he gave me his card and when I needed to go somewhere he was very punctual and you know, came, picked me up, etc, etc. So it was, I, I lived the taxi life but not the same as, you know, standing out there and you got to jump from taxi to taxi to taxi. So if I had to say that, that was challenging. Um, I can't really think of anything that's major challenging. I can repeat some of the same things that people say, but it's not that challenging for me. Someone said I should ask whether living in Africa, are you living or surviving? Oh, I think I'm living. Sometimes you forget what day it is, you're just living, yeah. It's not just surviving. And I think you also have to plan. Because that survival piece, yeah, that can exist if you don't, if you don't plan, if you just um, move on emotions. And sometimes we, we do that. I understand the feeling of wanting to go back to Mother Africa. That's, that's fine, but you got to gauge, am I just moving on emotions only, or am I going to use my rational, the rational as well? You have to plan. How am I going to sustain myself? Um, Organize, you know. So, um, my final question: What are the kind of opportunities that do you think uh, the diaspora returning in here can grab as soon as they get to the continent? I think anything you wish for, really. Um, I know a lot of times in the states we say we need to unify and come together and keep our dollars together. Da, da, da. This is where it can actually play out. Whatever idea you have, or whatever skill you have. This is just like a, you know, in Gambia, Africa on the whole, I'm sure, but specifically talking about Gambia, it's a place where you can actually try it out. And then you have a community of persons here who understand what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. So that's folks who can patronize, not just support, but patronize. You have a wonderful family of Gambian people, local people who are open and welcoming here. So you're just in a very good um, space to try whatever it is that you want to do. And you don't have to start out big, you can start out little. Whatever, whatever, you can just try it. Do you think I need a lot of money to start up my business in Africa? That depends. I mean, if you want to start a sanitation business, that might require some big funds, a big transportation business. Those are things like infrastructure things that require lots. But no, um, I think if you, like here, we're in Taft Madiba Mall, right in Bluefield Gardens, you pay um, your monthly rent, which is not very expensive. You buy your supplies or your things that you might ship and bring with you anyway, and you can just begin. So it's, it's not anywhere close. If I were to do this in the United States, it would take um, 10, 20 times as much to invest, I believe, or from what I research, 
than what I invested here. As I said, this is um, Oasis Roses and Emporium because we deserve the best. Mm. Okay, and I say we deserve the best because they're little stores of other folks, like in the States, for example, and it might be in the black community, mm. and they don't value us. You go in and it's dusty and it's old stuff, and, and I say, that's why I say Oasis Grocers and Emporium, because we deserve the best, okay? So in here I have different um, items. Um, if we look, uh, you look behind you to the right, we have uh, you know, our personal items, and we have um, bathroom tissue, your deodorants, and your fresheners, and your shampoos, etc. Um, on this front table, which I love, this is just a mixture of items that we have. Uh, this is like the um, Emporium piece, okay? Um, we have school supplies, different um, books related to um, education, mm -hmm. um, craft. Um, we have some beautiful crochet bags and hats. And, um, and then this book over here, which is dear to my heart. Um, if I can give a shameless plug before I let you go, I'm going to teach you myself seven tips for bringing out, bringing out the reader in your black child. I wrote it myself, so that's why I, I'm going to give a little plug on that. So over here we also have some of the, what I want to put here are the things that you would grab for baking, grab for lunch, grab for dinner. So the, the shelves aren't totally full yet, but they're going to continue, I'm going to continue to fill them up as I progress because I've only been here one month. Mm. Over here is your quick grab stuff. You know, your water and your, your drinks and um, over here is your snacks. This is quick grab, yeah? yeah quick, quick grab. Well, how much is the water? Twenty dollars. Twenty dollars. Mm -hmm. And then your little snacks over here. Just something really quick. So, I want to see if I have hundred dollars. See what can I grab in here. I just grab the water. Twenty is gone. Forty. Sixty. Yeah. Hey. Okay, that's really that's good. it. Hundred. <laughs> you know, we need to support our own. Yeah, this is the only money that I have in my pocket. Oh, you are so sweet. We thank you so much. I gotta frame that. And put a water my <laughs> You know, uh, there are so many uh, Africans living in the diaspora who are looking forward to visit, move to the continent. Mm -hmm. You've been here, you've experienced Africa. If you have a message for them, what would that message be? I would say do it. Just do it. Plan, but just come on out and do it. Any regrets so far? None. You didn't even tell me your name. My name is Janaki. 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 I want to say Auntie Janaki. Um, thank you so much for everything really. I appreciate your time and um, you know what? Um, I want this shop to be a diaspora shop or maybe if you're watching this video and even from the Gambia, I want you to shop here. And you know how I always say it by force to support an African business. So this is located right here at in Bruford Gardens, Taft Madiba Mall. It's right on Coastal Road. And we're in booth number 16. And if you would like, you can also um, See a little bit about us on my website. It's um, www.aquariusschoolforkids.com. And when you go in the shop section, click the Gambia, and then you'll see a little bit about the store. Thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you so much, Brother Watermeyer, for taking the time out to just visit our humble shop. Thank you.